Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode two of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock. Last episode, we started out with some basic X Nihilo stuff. We got our barrels, we got our sieve, and we infested a few trees. You may notice that the platform is substantially different to how it looked at the end of last episode, and that is because since the end of last episode, I've actually moved over onto my Patreon server, and so I had to do all of this stuff again. But we're pretty much at the same point we were at before. We've got the Tinker stuff, we got the sieve, we got some barrels we got our cobblestone generator i think the only main difference is that in the newer version of the mod pack you start out with two spawn pig two spawn sheep two spawn cow and two spawn chicken but everything else is exactly the same so uh, with that out of the way at the end of last episode we made ourselves the sieve and what i've gone ahead and done since the end of last episode is i got a stack of sand gravel and dust i took half of them and sifted half of each stack and this is what we ended up with here we got quite a nice amount of stuff here but enough like to make a few iron ingots maybe a few copper ingots if we wanted so uh, but i do do a bit more sifting we're going to have to do a bit more sifting uh, if we want to progress and get into some of uh, the actual uh, mods within this game and not just ex nihilo uh, but before we do that i want to get some more string because last episode we looked briefly at the heavy sieve which allows us to sieve compressed items and i kind of want to make that because basically uh, what i did here to get most of my sand gravel and dust is that uh, i used my chicken hammer this thing over here the chicken stick on my cobblestone generator got a bunch of gravel compressed that gravel and then using the compressed stone hammer that we made last episode used that to get all of the sand and dust because it made life so much easier in terms of getting in terms of hammering a lot of stuff all at once and what i would like to be able to do is the same thing with sifting i'd like to be able to sift a ton of stuff at once and so what we're going to do real quick at the start of today's episode is grab a bunch of this stuff try and get enough i'm thinking there should be enough here we got like what four trees worth we got four trees worth of string this should be more than enough to make a heavy sieve uh, before we do that what i want to do as well real quick is actually no we'll come back to that in a second let me finish this Okay, so now that I've broken all of the leaves that I can easily reach, apart from that one there, we've got just over a stack and a bit of string here. And actually, there's a little, wow, there's quite a bit laying around on the floor. Let me grab all of this. we got just under a stack and a half there. So if we come back over here, we should be fairly easily able to make uh, four of these silk meshes. Like So we could probably actually make two heavy saves if we wanted to. There's not really any point to doing so, uh, but we could do it if we wanted to. So uh, let's go ahead and grab myself some sticks like so. And then, uh, as we tried to do at the end of last episode, if we... We do oh no we need to do this don't we we need to combine those up and uh, to get some heavy silk mesh so we do in fact have to have, go ahead and do something like this and get a bunch more of them and uh, oh, we're not going to have enough. We are actually just going to have enough. We're going to have enough. I was completely lying. If we do this, we can go boom, boom, and get a heavy oak sieve. Not quite sure why I thought we weren't going to have enough there. But now that we have enough uh, and we have a heavy sieve, what we should be able to do is, for example, take our gravel, compress it up, and sift it. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be any slower than normal. It looks like it, it's actually just as fast. It looks like it might be a tiny bit slower, if anything, than the default one. But... That gives us, I, is that working right? That doesn't feel like it's giving us a lot of stuff. I felt like we just sieved two gravel. Did I do that right? I think it might actually be right. Okay, so I just did one of these compressed dust blocks, and then I did some normal dust, and the first two normal dusts that I did actually didn't come back with anything, and then the third one came back with one sky stone and one normal iron. That seems like a really low amount of stuff that we're getting out of this thing. Uh, I was actually expecting a lot more, but I guess that's right. I'm hoping that's right. There might be a bit of a... Um kind of debuff kind of thing going on like if you use the compressed version you get a little bit less back i don't know if that's the case or if we're getting exactly the right amount but uh, what we can do now is we can go away and we can sift a bunch of stuff at a time which is pretty useful uh, before i do that the next thing that i would kind of like to talk about is cobblestone generation because although i love standing here for tens of minutes at a time breaking cobblestone so that we can hammer it down and sift it uh, i would like if we could automatically break the cobblestone and set up a bit of an automatic cobblestone generator and to do that we are going to need a few things we're going to need a transfer node from extra utilities this guy over here the item transfer node and to make that we're going to need a bunch of redstone the chest's fairly easy the stone and we've got a furnace we can make stone really easily the hardest bit is the redstone and for this we're going to need 9 10 11 and then one for the uh, the pipe here that's going through a bunch of different pipes but we're going to make uh, these basic pipes here which requires one more and so we need 13 redstone uh, to get that but that's not all we also need a world interaction upgrade to make it work and to get this uh, the most important thing is the diamond pickaxe requiring three diamonds so we're going to have to save a little bit more dust 
and a little bit more gravel to make both of these work. But before we go away uh, to sift all that stuff again, uh, what I would like to do is I would like to set up a crucible. And uh, for those who have played with X and Halo before, you'll know that a crucible is how we get lava in the sky. And to get a crucible, we are going to need some of this porcelain clay. And to get that, we need clay and bone meal. Now, clay is gotten by putting uh, one piece of dust, so here, this dust, into one of these barrels when they're filled with water. Now, because I moved onto the server, it actually hasn't rained yet. And so we have no water in here. But what you can do is if we look over here quickly in the guide and scroll down to getting water, uh, you'll see that you can actually take water in bottles from an unlimited water source, or from a normal water source, I should say. Uh, so if we get some bottles, for example, let's put three glass in here and a little bit of charcoal. Uh, if we do this and try and get ourselves three glass to make a bottle, we should then be able to right-click that bottle of water on this water source here. It shouldn't use up the water source, but should put water into the bottle, at which point we can then go ahead and put that water into the barrel. It takes four bottles worth to fill up a barrel I believe and then we can put some dust into the barrel as well and that will make us a clay block at which point we can break that clay block down craft it up with our bone meal and get ourselves some porcelain clay so uh, let's quickly wait for this to finish uh, we are going to need three more because like I said we're going to need six and I'm fairly certain that three of these only makes three bottles yeah, that makes three bottles. One, two, three. That does actually work. And then if we go one, two, three, we're 99.9% .9 full at the top there. I, I'm surprised they didn't just make that go to 100. But nevertheless, uh, once this is done, we should be able to fill that up. Like so, let's come back over here. Let's make ourselves three more glass bottles. Actually, we didn't need any more glass bottles. We could have used the uh, the leftover ones to fill this up, but that is fine. Let's just go ahead and fill up the second one as well because uh, we are going to need at least four pieces of clay to make this work. So if we do that, I hammered out a bit more dust. So if we go boom and boom, we can get ourselves two blocks worth of clay, which if we then throw down on the floor, we can break into actual clay. And then thanks to the sifting we did of, I think it's sand, uh, we can make ourselves... So Boston Clay, the sand sifting got us the bomb here. Let me check that real quick. Is it sand sifting? It might be dust sifting now I think about it it is totally dust sifting that gets us that uh, so now that we've got ourselves some porcelain clay we can go ahead and we can craft that up like so and then we can go ahead and smelt this guy up and that's going to get us a normal crucible and what the crucible does is it turns cobblestone into lava so if we were to put it uh, above any kind of heat source I think a torch works and I'm not too sure uh, I think it's a config option sometimes torches work sometimes they don't but I know for a fact that it definitely works over lava so if we were to take this guy and stick it right above the this thing here like so and then let me quickly get rid of that uh, this now has a heat source if you look at the top there you can kind of see it says melting speed at 2.0 so now if you put some cobblestone into there one two three four uh, you can see we have 996 998 it's going down uh, millibuckets worth of solid volume and that is slowly transforming into fluid volume and basically four cobblestone equals 1000 millibuckets aka one bucket worth of lava so if we leave that for a little while that will turn into one bucket worth of lava which will be used for later on for making things like obsidian and for powering things like the smell tree which we're hopefully going to get into maybe at the end of this episode maybe at the beginning of next episode but what i'm going to do now guys i'm going to go away i'm going to do a bunch more hammering a bunch more sifting uh, probably using this heavy sieve over here to try and get enough redstone and diamonds to make the cobblestone generator and i'll be back in a second and a little while later we now have more than enough redstone diamonds lapis and iron so i think we should be able to get this thing up and running so i went ahead and smelted up a little bit of stone we are going to have to quickly smelt up a little bit of iron it's probably for the best if we hammer this down real quick because by hammering it down we do have a little bit of a chance of getting some more iron out of this thing especially uh, since we're going to be smelting up some of this crushed iron as well uh, so let me go and break this down a little bit oh does that not work Okay, so it turns out that you have to use the iron gravel. You can't use the chicken stick on, I guess, anything but cobblestone. So we have to use... Uh, I shouldn't probably be using the compressed hammer on this because it's probably wasting durability that we don't need to waste. But uh, we now have 20 as opposed to the original 17, I think, that we had. And um, we can now go ahead and make five blocks of those, which I think we can actually go ahead and smash down again to get possibly a little bit more. I find it unlikely that we'll get up to six blocks. But we got one more, which we can use in the future. Uh, and if we come back over here, we might have enough... Oh, we got 20. 26 powdered iron over there, jeez. Uh, if we do that, we've now got 11 iron blocks, which we can then smelt up uh, over here into 11 iron ingots. Whilst we're waiting for these to smelt up, let's go ahead and quickly craft up uh, the redstone block. And I don't think the actual transfer itself requires any iron. It doesn't. Uh, it does require a chest, so let's throw four logs into there, take the eight planks, make a quick chest. And all we're missing then is the pipes, which we can make fairly easily like so. Let's get ourselves some slabs, throw those down along the top and the bottom. Uh, we are going to need a little bit more glass, actually, to make this work as well. Do we have four of these yet? We do. Let's take that out, get ourselves two more pieces of glass. 
And once we've got those, I think that's pretty much everything we need to get this up and running. So transfer pipe, we can put there. Redstone, we can put there, there, and there. Stone either side, chest in the middle. That gets us the transfer node. Then all we need is the world interaction upgrade, uh, which is the lapis, the iron, and the diamond pickaxe. That means we do need uh, at least two sticks like so. We can then go ahead, do something like this. And once we've got this guy, we could throw you there. Lapis in the corners, I think it is, and then iron in the middle like so. And that gets us a world interaction upgrade. Nice. Now, we're going to need somewhere to store all of this stuff because if we put the transfer node down right about there with nothing above it, right now it's all going to go into the crucible. Uh, that's not too bad. Actually, I don't think it will because I think you have to pipe into the top of the crucible. Uh, and so what I think we will do is I think we'll do something like this. And I also kind of want to make a barrel from the Jabber mod, this thing over here, because this can hold up to 64 stacks of oak by default. Uh, and what's going to happen there is we're going to have half of the wood uh, go directly over into the crucible and the other half go, or half of the cobblestone, sorry, go directly over into the crucible and the other half go round and into the um the jabber barrel that we're about to make what are we missing we're missing a slab do i have any i do i have five so let's go ahead and throw you up top that gets the barrel which we can now go ahead and throw down right about there and if we throw the world interaction upgrade in like so it's not going to be particularly fast it's going to pick up about one cobblestone a second but it's better than nothing and it should start to fill this thing up fairly quickly you can see we're at 45 already and this thing also i thought was going to fill up but apparently is not and uh, maybe i can't have more than a thousand millibuckets of lava in there that's not usually the case but i might be doing something else wrong there uh, but the good news is we have some cobblestone coming up to over here and now it's a lot easier to actually get gravel sand and dust because of course we can go ahead we can compress up this cobblestone like so and we can get nine with every swing of the hammer as opposed to the one that we were getting back at the cobblestone generator and that's gonna make our life a lot easier in terms of sifting and of course we now have the heavy duty sieve uh, which of course again makes life a bit easier as well so now that we have all this what do we need to work on next well, the next thing we need to work towards Relay is the Forge Hammer, because pretty much everything we're going to build, uh, especially early game, uh, is going to require some kind of plates. And to make plates, you need ingots and you need the Forge Hammer. Now, the hardest part about making the Forge Hammer isn't the iron, it's the treated sticks. Because to get treated sticks, we need some treated wood, and to get treated wood, uh, I'm going to type it in over here because these ones are not the ones we're after, to get treated wooden planks, which are these ones, uh, we need some oak wood and some creosote oil. We need either a bucket of it or a cell of it and creosote oil. And to get that, we need a coke oven. Now, to get a coke oven, uh, thankfully, it's not all too hard. We need sand and we need bricks. Now, the way we get bricks is obviously by smelting clay and we get sand by breaking down cobblestone into gravel then gravel into sand. And of course, we have ourselves a nice way of getting clay via these barrels over here. So, what I'm going to do real quick, guys, is I'm going to go away once again. I'm going to use my glass bottles here uh, to fill up these barrels time and time again uh, until we have a ton of clay. We're going to break all that clay down down into a bunch of clay balls. Then I'm going to smelt up that clay into a bunch of clay bricks, and I'm also going to get a bunch of sand, and I'll be back in a second once we have enough to make a cook oven. Okay, so a lot of smelting and hammering later, we now have the 104 uh, brick and sand that we need to make ourselves the 26 of these. That is not quite 26. Let me try a little bit more sand here real quick. Uh, we should actually be able to just break down one of these. Like, so my compressed stone hammer is almost done for, uh, but I think that will take us over the edge with the two more, and that gets us 26 blocks worth of coal cog. Now, uh, the reason we need 26 is because it's a 3x3 multi-block with a hollow center. That's 9 on each layer, 3 layers to 27, take away the middle block is 26 so and uh, not much space here i'm gonna put it right about here for now just because i don't really want to expand just yet uh, so if we do something like this build it up one more layer again remembering to leave that middle bit hollow we should Get a multi-block. Nice. And you'll know it's become a multi-block when you get this little window on the side. Now, if we open it up, we have a fully functioning coke oven. And the way the coke oven works is it very, very slowly turns normal coal into coal coke. And every time it does it, it gives you 500 millibuckets worth of creosote oil. So if we were to go ahead and put two uh, coal in there, it's going to take a long time. Let me have a look at the recipe real quick. It takes like a real long time. Uh, if we look at coal coke, uh, it takes, let's see, how many ticks? It takes 1,800 ticks. There are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. Meaning it's going to take about 90 seconds for this to complete, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of time, but that means it's going to take three minutes for both of these to smelt up here, which is quite a while. And so what I'm going to do whilst I wait for these to smelt up uh, is I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do just a bunch more grinding, actually. I'm going to make myself another compressed hammer because this one has zero durability left. I'm assuming as soon as I break one more item, this thing is going to break... And it did. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to get myself another one of those hammers. I'm going to break down a bunch of our stuff, do as much sifting as I can, and I'll be back in a second. 
And a little while later, once the coke oven is done, we now have 1,000 millibuckets worth of creosote oil. So uh, I think we can pull this out with a glass bottle. I was getting a little worried because we didn't actually have uh, any kind of bucket and we can't make a bucket until we get the forge hammer. But turns out you can do it with a bottle. And if we go ahead and do something like this, we get ourselves eight treated wooden planks, which we can then go ahead and craft up into four sticks, which we can then go ahead and use uh, with a little bit of iron to make ourselves a forge hammer. Nice. Now, this kind of comes at the perfect time, because whilst I was waiting for the coke coke to smelt, uh, I decided I would start preparing for a Tinker's Construct smeltery, and to get that, we need sand, gravel, and clay. Whilst I was getting clay, whilst I was trying to get water from our water source behind us, I accidentally put down some dust on top of my water source, and it is now gone. Thankfully, we have a little bit of water left in here, so uh, if we actually go ahead and make our first bucket, which I think we can do, we totally can't do, because we need one more ingot worth of iron, thankfully. Fully, I think, yeah, we've got enough powdered iron in here uh, to craft up one more. Uh, so we should be able to get ourselves a bucket and then should be able to use that bucket uh, to get the water source back down over here and continue on making some clay. However, I think 48 might actually be enough because we're going to start out with a real small smell. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this up uh, into three. I'm going to take you out of there. We only need the one. Uh, and then let's go ahead and put you, you, and and you in there. We're going to have to do a little bit more tree chopping because we are running out of fuel in here. But uh, let's quickly grab, uh, let's really make ourselves a bucket here. Let's make two more. Oh, we get to, oh, I completely forget every time. I thought we were getting one plate per iron ingot. It turns out we're actually crafting two iron ingots into one iron plate. Jeez, it's been way too long since the last time I played this. So I guess we're going to have to smell up these last two as well real quick. I could smell up my treated wooden planks, but that seems like a terrible idea instead. Let's quickly grab some oak from this. And once we've got those final two pieces of iron, we can come back over and actually craft ourselves a bucket. And let's get that last plate like so. It doesn't... It's been a little glitchy with the crafting there, but that gets us our third plate. And if we go boom, boom, and boom, we get ourselves an iron bucket, which we can now use to move that back over there, getting us the unlimited water source that we need using these, uh, these bottles over here to fill this back up. So what I'm going to do now... Oh, what is that? A bucket trophy. Oh, okay, so I noticed this. The Feed the Beast team were tweeting about this uh, before the pack released. They've got these trophies that you get for doing certain things within the pack. I'm not quite sure what all the trophies are, but apparently we have been given a bucket trophy. So you know what, for now, uh, let's just put that down like right here. I guess we need to make, we need to set up like a shelf or somewhere or a room to put all our trophies in. But it's basically what I'm going to do now, guys. I'm going to go away. I'm going to wait for all of these to smell down uh, into seared bricks. And I'll be back in a second. And again, a little while later, now that all of these seared bricks are done, we can take them out. Oh, almost all of these seared bricks are done. We have a few more left uh, in there. Let's get those smelted up, because I think we're actually going to need them. Uh, for some reason, my compressed hammer has stopped working on compressed dust. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, it still works perfectly fine on compressed gravel. But for whatever reason, it does not want to work on this compressed dust over here. So I'll probably make another hammer uh, in a second to try and get rid of this massive line of compressed dust. I want to do a little bit more sifting whilst I was waiting for this to smelt. But uh, now that it is pretty much done, let's come over here and let's see about making uh, our first smeltery. So we don't have that many seared bricks, and we're going to try and uh, make one of the really small one-by-one -one smelteries. So to do that, we're going to need one block there. We're going to need one block there. Let me get rid of this. We're going to need a controller on the front, a tank on one side, and a drain on the other. So for that, we're definitely going to need at least one piece of glass. So let me try and smelt that up in there. We're also going to need the controller, which looks a little bit like this. I think the drain looks something like that. We're going to need a faucet, which looks a little bit like that. And then we're going to need a casting table as well that looks something like that. And I think uh, once we've got this piece of glass, that's pretty much about everything. The glass, uh, of course, being used to make ourselves the tank. And then the, the lava that we have in here uh, being used to smell our stuff down. So let's try this real quick. I'm uh, just going to put this compressed gravel there as a placeholder. We'll put the controller on the front. We'll put the tank here. We will put the drain there. We'll put the casting table there. And we will stick down our faucet like so. And that should, once we get rid of this, actually form into a perfectly working smell drain. You can see the controller has lit up, which means it works. It's really, really small. We can only smelt one thing at a time, but for now, it will work just fine. In the future, we can go ahead and make this a little bit bigger once we get some more sand, gravel, and clay. But for now, uh, let's come back over here. Let's grab ourselves a bucket of lava. Uh, actually, that seems to have been working fine uh, with the cobblestone pumping in, because if you look at the top there, we have 7,000 millibuckets of lava. So we've got seven buckets of lava uh, just sitting over there right now, which is going to be really useful for smelting things up in the smeltery over here. 
Now, the reason I've made this is because what I want to do next is I want to move into making some machines, and those machines are going to require gears. Now, uh, I was looking at the sieves earlier on, and it turns out that X Compressum, or X Compressium, uh, adds an auto sieve, which is pretty similar to the normal X Asterisk automatic sieve, but it's definitely cheaper to make. It requires two blocks of iron, so 18 iron there, then two more iron ingots, so 20 iron in total, a normal sieve, and then four glass pins, making it significantly cheaper than this one over here, which requires an Electrum gear, as well as some invar and a silk mesh. I guess we probably could make this one as well uh, because gold and silver is fairly easy to get with electrum. Uh, I guess iron is fairly easy to get as well with ferrous to make the invar. So I guess this one's actually uh, not too bad either. But I kind of want to try this one out mainly because I've never seen it before and it looks pretty cool. Uh, so to make this, we're going to basically just need a ton of iron. This doesn't really uh, clarify why I need the smeltery. The reason we need the smeltery is because to power this auto save, uh, we're going to use hobbyist steam engines, these guys over here. And to use these, we need to get ourselves two golden gears and of course to get golden gears we need to put gold into a smelt ray and then down into a gear cast so uh, that is one of the first things we're going to do right about now we're going to get all of the gold that we have let's have a look here by the way a little trick if you double click on the nei bar there and type something in it will highlight them uh, in the box here we don't have a ton of gold we're definitely going to have to do uh, a little bit more sifting we also don't have enough iron by the way either to make uh, the auto sift which is why i got this big long line of compressed dust but uh, beside the point let's go ahead and start smelting up a little bit of gold because we're going to need at least two of these to make ourselves the gear cast before we even start to think about making those two golden gears. So for now, let's put that back in there. Uh, to make the gear cast, we are going to need a stone gear, which thankfully is fairly easy to make. All it is is four sticks and four cobblestones. So let me do a quick check. Do we have any sticks? We've got one stick in there. Uh, we got one more stick. Ah, here we go. We can use these here uh, to make ourselves a bunch of our sticks. We already have the cobblestone, thanks to this thing over here, which is now full on cobblestone as well. So if we go one, two, three, four, and one more time, one, two, three, four, we got ourselves a stone gear. Nice. So, all we need to do now is stick this thing over here. It's at this point that I realized that it was kind of pointless to smelt the gold up in the slab furnace. I probably should have just put it uh, directly into here. But now, once both of these gold ingots have smelted down into the smelt tray, we can drop them out over the casting table here, over the stone gear, and it will create a gear cast, at which point we can then go ahead and make more gears in the future. But what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to try and get another hammer that works on this dust. I'm going to do a bunch of sieving, try and get enough iron, gold, and all that stuff to make the auto sieve and the hobby steam engine and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I suddenly realized whilst I was breaking these that I was being a complete and utter massive derp when I was trying to break the ham trying to break this compressed dust with my hammer. And I know already there was gonna be like five comments in the comment section saying, Isaac, you massive derp. Uh, you don't use the hammer on compressed dust, you sift the compressed dust, which is 100 percent right. Uh, you're not supposed to use the hammer on the compressed dust, you don't get anything. Uh, for some reason I thought this was like maybe sand, uh, but don't try and do that. Don't try and use the hammer on the compressed dust. It doesn't work. Okay, so again, a little while later, after a bunch more hammering and sifting, we now have 18 iron ore dusts and 6 gold ore dusts. Uh, I'm putting one into here because each ore dust that you put into the smeltery, that's the final tier where you craft up uh, the dust version, so you got to hammer down the gravel, hammer down the sand, hammer down into dust. If you put the dust versions into the smeltery, you actually get 2 ingots per every single one of these dusts. So, we now have 4 golden ingots in the smeltery. We can use 2 of those to make ourselves a gear cast. Once that's done, I'm going to use one of these bricks here to make myself a a ingot cast like so whilst we're waiting for that to finish up real quick we're going to come back over to our crafting table make ourselves a basin uh, because once we put all of our iron in here we're going to have 36 iron in the smeltery and of course we do need two uh, blocks of iron to make ourselves the auto sieve so again I'm going to go away I'm going to get all the ingots that we need to make the auto sieve and the hobby steam engine and I'll be back in a second also, quick side note, whilst we're waiting for things to smell, it is now a lot easier for us to make clay, because all we have to do is fill up one of these barrels, get one bucket's worth, and we can actually make unlimited water sauce like so. So now we don't have to bother with all of these bottles. Instead, we can just grab a bucket of water from the middle here, fill up these barrels, and get ourselves a ton of clay. So, uh, whilst I'm waiting for those things to smell up, because it is so slow, I'm also going to work on making it a little bit taller so we can smell multiple blocks at once. Hey! 
And finally, way too long later, we have now smelted up all of the iron into two iron blocks and four iron ingots. Well, almost all of the iron. We still have some iron and some gold left. But uh, we have enough, I think, to make ourselves the auto save and the hobby steam engine. All we need to do now is pull out both of these golden gears. Uh, both the golden gears do require four gold ingots each. That golden gear was kind of massive. Uh, but if we come back over to here, what do we need for the auto save? First things first, we need the normal save, which we can just pick up from here. We're going to need a little bit of glass, which we can take from these furnaces is right here turn those into pins once we've got ourselves some glass pins we can go ahead and do something like this nice and that gets us the auto save which i am for now gonna put down right about here and if we look inside uh, it looks exactly like the normal automatic sieve does from x asterisk all you gotta do is put stuff in here and it will sift it out into stuff in here if it is provided with some power which is where the hobbyist steam engine comes in so uh, we are actually gonna need a few more golden ingots let me put those into there uh, let's have a look real quick at the recipe for a hobbyist steam engine and uh, for this we're going to the piston two golden gears one piece of glass and three more golden ingots thankfully gold seems to smell up quite a bit faster than iron does, so that shouldn't take all too long, uh, but we are going to need to make ourselves a piston, so uh, let's quickly grab some of the wood out of here. We don't have all that much left. Oh, oh we've got just enough, though. We've got the three that we need uh, to come into here and to do something like this. Let's grab that. Let's grab one piece of redstone. Uh, we've got one iron, so we should... be able to make a piston. Nice. How are we doing on the gold front? The gold is almost there. And once it's done and we've got all of the ingots, all we have to do is come back over to here, go boom, boom, and we get ourselves the hobby steam engine. Nice. Now, the final thing that we are going to need is a lever to actually make this thing work. Thankfully, we have one stick and one piece of cobblestone. So let's go ahead and not use our treated sticks, use our normal sticks. And basically, the way that this works is you provide it with fuel and water, and it will output a redstone flux. It does need to be turned on with a lever, as do I think all of the engines from Railcraft. So let me quickly get rid of this lava bucket here. Let's quickly grab a bucket of water from over here. If we stick that into there and we give it a little bit of fuel, I guess we can give it a bit of coal. I sifted quite a bit of gravel, so we've got quite a nice amount of coal over there. Uh, it will slowly start to build up redstone flux per tick. At max, this thing produces 20 redstone flux per tick. To start with, it's not going to produce anywhere near that much. You can see right now, it's producing zero. As the temperature rises and as we turn it on, uh, it will start to produce more and more over time and slowly build up to 20 redstone flux per tick. So what we're going to do next time is we'll come back, we'll work on getting an unlimited water source closer to this hobby steam engine and get this thing automatically filled up with water and upon possibly automatically filled up with fuel that's gonna be a little bit harder to do but we can definitely get it automatically filled up with water get it up to 20 redstone flux per tick this thing does use 40 redstone flux per tick to work so we are going to need to make another one of these and hook it up probably like on the other side here and hook up that with unlimited water as well to get it to go at full speed but for now we do have albeit a very slow way of auto sifting stuff and by slime I mean like really really slow you can see the white bars ever so slightly appearing over there it's really really slow but with that guys i'm gonna end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Skyblock there. Thanks for watching. As always, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.